What is the moment you realized you were dating a keeper? My mom died unexpectedly when I was 20. I'm 29 now and sometimes still have a really difficult time dealing with the emotions of losing her. One year right around her birthday. I was feeling pretty blue. I came home from work on her actual birthday and he was standing in the kitchen holding a cake he had baked. Complete with a lit candle. And said, just because she died doesn't mean we can't celebrate that she lived. I just sobbed and he held me close until I had cried it out. Then we celebrated her life. Every year since then. He has bought her a birthday card and we light a candle to remember her. He's an amazing man. About a month in. My father was going through some stuff that made us think he might have cancer and the doctors ran a bunch of tests. While this was going on I was having lunch with her one day and related to her that I was in no way ready to find out that my dad had cancer. And how much that scared me. She listened and sympathized and told me not to worry. She was great. About a week later I was eating alone in a bar near my place while she was at a graduation party with her family I was a semester behind. Not a good student. I get a call from her and can barely understand her through the tears. All she can really tell me is that she'd like to be picked up. I go to get her and on the ride home she spills her guts, turns out her father was in the middle of a battle with brain cancer. And her mother had not done a good job of preparing her for how much worse he had gotten since she had seen him last. It was more than she could handle in a public setting like that. It was then that I realized what kind of person she is. She sat there and listened to me going on and on about how scared I was for my father. And she chose to support me instead of telling me just how little I knew about what it means to be losing a parent. She is the most beautiful, caring and selfless person I know. Every day I'm with her I become a better person. We've been together now for four, five years, married for one, five and I still fall more in love with her every day. I personally don't have those moments that people talk about when they know it happened. I usually remember the progression. For me though, one day I kind of realized I had been thinking about us all the time. What I mean by that is before we met. I had plans and visions of traveling to different places and doing different things. I would hike the ad and cycle across America. I would go to new cities and find a great job. I would have all these adventures and meet all these people. I was going to have a blast. I stopped thinking and I at some point. Those thoughts became us having all these adventures. We would travel to a new city and start a life. We would do this awesome thing and go to this awesome place. We would have a great life. She snuck her way into my life and I didn't even know it. When I realized that, I realized that was exactly what I wanted. She was exactly what I wanted. We are exactly what I want. My older sister came to visit when I first began dating my girlfriend. I had told my girlfriend how close I was to my sister. And how wonderful she was. Previous girlfriends had found my sister threatening because of our closeness. My girlfriend couldn't come over. Due to obligations. Until about 10 p.m. on the evening my sister arrived. My sister was in the guest room in bed. Beneath a mosquito netting, I live in the tropics. When my girlfriend and I walked in the room. She lifted the netting. Crawled in next to my sister and gave my sister a big hug. Telling her how happy she was to meet her. They have been close ever since. And my girlfriend and I have been married now for 24 years. That she still smiles every time we kiss. Just like the first time. Every time. Wouldn't trade it for anything. We'd been dating long distance for a few months. And then one night he surprised me by popping over unexpectedly. I leapt out the door and attached myself to him. Hadn't really realized how much I needed him before that. He moved in right then. And it's been the best 12 years of my life since. I... My boyfriend was an Eagle Scout who collected rocks when he was little. He had purchased a heart-shaped tiger's eye from Disneyland when he was a tot. And kept it hidden with the intention of gifting it to the girl he was going to marry. One night. When I was almost asleep he asked me if I would want a promise rock. This is the first he had mentioned the rock. And in my sleep talking haze. I didn't understand and kept repeating. Promise gravel? How romantic. Months later he gave me the rock for Christmas. Despite my sleepy subconscious being a real killjoy, it is the single most sentimental object I own and is a physical symbol of all the incredibly romantic things he has done for me. My boyfriend and his family have this little ritual where they squeeze each other's hand three times to signify, I love you. Four times as a return to signify, I love you too. 
I didn't know that he had told me he loved me in this secret family way until after we'd told each other with words how we felt. All that time he'd been telling me he loved me and I was never saying it back because I never knew, not to make a big deal out of it. Not to get me to say it back. Not because he wanted anything, but just because he wanted to tell me he loved me in his own special way. When I found that out I think I realized that this was more than love. I don't know if this will mean anything to anyone but me but I think it's painfully romantic and it makes my heart hurt. It was my birthday. I came home from work and was going to shower and change because she had said that we had reservations at a nice restaurant. We didn't really have much money and I didn't really feel like going out. But my birthday gave us a good excuse to splurge a little. So I wasn't complaining. As I opened the door, she was standing there waiting for me. In her hands, she was holding a plate on which sat a BLT with ISU not, a full pound of bacon on it. She directed me to the couch where she had a bourbon waiting for me. When we sat down to eat, she hit play on the DVD player and Fellowship of the Ring started playing. We finished our sandwiches and she turned to me with a slightly ashamed look and confessed. I'm sorry but I don't have a cake for you. That's okay. I said. This was already perfect. She took our plates to the kitchen then returned to refill my bourbon. She went back in the kitchen and turned on the sink to wash the plates. Two minutes later, she walks in the living room with a beautiful, homemade peach pie, birthday candles and all. My absolute favorite desert on the planet. It seems so small, but to me, it was enormous. She knew me. She knew exactly how to make that day special for me. I remember looking at her that night and knowing, with total certainty, that I was going to marry that woman. When he showed up on my doorstep with wine in San Francisco after driving eight hours as a surprise. Somehow he managed to keep it all a secret till he was there. I thought I wasn't going to get to see him at all that summer. His reason, he just missed me. I booked tickets to fly next day to America from Scotland the day before her birthday after saying I would be there if I could. And realizing I had no good reason to not be there. She left me for one of our closest friends. I would have kept her forever. The feeling must not have been mutual. When I realized he'd never broken a promise to me. No matter how big or small. He said he'd be there at 3. He's there at 3. He said he'll take out the trash. It is done. When I pooped her bed. Was deathly sick. Some kind of food poisoning. And had literally no control over anything. Woke up covered in poo. And just said oh my god and ran to the bathroom. Came back. And everything was already cleaned up. Fresh sheets. Mattress flipped. And she never did anything but make sure I was okay. She's comfortable enough to clean up my poo. Keeper. Early on in our relationship. I took her to visit my mom's house. While we were there. We started looking through some of my childhood belongings that were in boxes in the garage. And at one point I remembered that my favorite stuffed animal, a dog that I had since birth was kept in there as well. By complete coincidence. My mom's actual dog had very recently managed to find my stuffed dog and had ripped it apart. There was a trail of stuffing leading outside to the doghouse. I felt abysmal at seeing my favorite childhood toy destroyed like that. But I wanted to try and maintain my composure since this was still in the early days of my relationship with this woman. It was no use. My lip quivered and some decidedly unmanly tears were shed. This woman. This wonderful young woman. Picked up the remains of my not stuffed anymore dog and said that she could fix it. And she did. His ears were forever lost and now he has sort of a two-faced thing going on. But he's whole again and now I've passed doggy down to our son. When I realized that I had spent two months straight with him. Literally every single day. Without getting sick of him. I've always been super independent and I usually got sick of people quickly. My relationships never lasted more than a few months. We've lived together for a little over a year. And I still get butterflies when I come home to him. I was in college. I was working two jobs. 60 hours a week. I met her on OkCupid. She would come over and we would hang out. Often we would watch a movie and I would fall asleep exhausted. She would put the covers over me. Go downstairs. Walk past the front door. Through the dining room. The kitchen and into the computer room to say goodbye to my dad. Every time she left. She made sure to say goodbye to my parents. This is such a big deal for me. My first serious boyfriend in college visited me at my family's house during summer break. He was there all day. Had dinner with us. Played a board game. 
etc. When he left, I walked him to his car and kissed him goodbye. I came back into the house. And my parents were confused. Did he leave? My mom asked. He didn't say goodbye to my parents. Or thank them for dinner? Oh my gosh. My husband and I met on eHarmony. I let him know from the start that I had a young child and he assured me that he was okay with that. My son was one and a half months old when we met long story and when he came to pick me up on our first date, he brought my son a teddy bear that played music and a pack of cute Valentine's Day bibs. I thought that was a really sweet gesture. We had an amazing first date and we started dating regularly. He was there for me when I was going through the challenges of being a first time mother. Trying to breastfeed in. Ultimately, finding out I couldn't make enough milk to feed my child, and having to put him on formula, I was devastated. For a man I just met, I couldn't believe he was so willing to help in a situation where most men would turn tail and run. But, that wasn't the clincher. One night, he was sitting in the recliner at my parents' house holding my son and trying to burp him after a feeding. He had him propped up on his shoulder and was speaking to him softly. I don't think he thought I could hear. But I heard him say, come on, little guy, burp for daddy, after the circumstances surrounding how my son came to be, and all that I had been through in the recent months following up to his birth. I felt broken, like no one would ever want me, let alone truly love me and my child. I'm happy to say he proved me completely wrong. We've been together for almost five years, married for over three and a half years, and we're expecting baby number three. We had been together for almost two years already and I loved him so much already. But I knew when we were in line at Subway and they asked him what kind of bread he liked and he said. Italian. Paused. Looked at me. And whispered, that's the kind I like. Right. Early on in our relationship I was in and out of sleep one night and he's awake confessing his love for me to my cat. I don't remember everything he said but when I woke up the next morning with our bodies completely entwined with one another with very little space between that's when I knew. The past five years we've been through it all and I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. We had been dating for a little less than a year and I was crazy about him. But still had some reservations because we're young and who hasn't been hurt before. Well, my grandmother passed away late December and I got the call from my mom while he was at band practice. He knew how much she meant to me. So when I called him crying, he left immediately and held me. I felt so safe and comforted that I knew he was really special. But the funeral was what really sealed the deal. He had only met my grandmother once and it was when she was pretty far gone. I wasn't expecting him to come to the funeral because it was two hours away and he'd have to face crazy holiday traffic. He drove almost three hours. In horrible traffic. In a very respectful suit to be with me for one hour and even went through with meeting my entire extended family. He showed so much respect for me and for her that I knew I'd never find anyone else like him no matter how hard I tried. I'd been dating this guy for two years and we'd broken up. For me, I think it was because things were getting too serious for my then 20-year-old mind to handle. I moved to a different state for a year and a half and we'd completely lost touch. I then received news at one in the morning that my cousin had passed away. 19 years old in a motorcycle accident. He was the closest thing to a brother that I had. I sat in my apartment sobbing until 5 in the morning when I get a message on Facebook. It's him. Checking in on me and making sure that I'm okay. He sat there and chatted with me for an hour after not having heard from him for almost two years. I'd stopped crying for the first time since I heard the news and pulled myself together enough to get ready for the flight that I had just booked back home for the funeral and to be with my family. I'd invited him to the wake and the funeral services because I knew that they rode motorcycles together a couple of times and I wanted him to have the opportunity to say goodbye if he wanted to. He wouldn't have shown up if I didn't invite him. He's sweet like that. He wouldn't show up if he had any inclination that it would be at all uncomfortable for me. I'm the oldest of all my cousins and sisters in an Asian family so it was pretty much put on me to hold it together and take care of the children because the adults were dealing with everything funeral related. I didn't have much of an opportunity to break down and cry because I was instructed with being strong and taking care of everyone else. The minute I saw him at the wake, I went into his arms and cried for the first time in days. Like full out sobbing. The entire time, he held me and told me that he was sorry. So sorry. It was like not a second had passed since we had last seen each other. 
We sat in his truck after the wake talking for an hour before I realized that we were the last ones there and I needed to be getting back. He took me to my aunt's house and promised to be at the funeral the next day. Not only did he attend the funeral but he attended the gathering at my aunt's house afterwards. After everything was said and done and I returned to my apartment in another state. We kept in touch and he helped me through a lot of my grief. I wound up moving back home to be closer to my family and help everyone out with the aftershocks of my cousin's death. We started dating again and it honestly never felt like we had broken up at all. We'd picked up right where we left off. The feeling of emptiness when she's not around. It's easy to take your so for granted when you spend all of your time with them. But I knew she was the one when she left for 8 months. Every minute she was gone felt like half of me was missing. Work sucked. Playing video games sucked. Watching sports sucked. I went to visit her halfway through the term she was gone and that feeling of unification is indescribable. At the same time, turning and walking away from her to airport security was the hardest thing I've ever done. Knowing it would be four long. Cold winter months before I could see her again. That was last Sunday. She'll be home for good in April when we'll move in together. Until then, back to reading Askredit threads at work because I simply lacked the motivation to do anything else. The moment she started telling me things that you know she doesn't tell everyone. And I started doing the same. When, after dating two months, we were walking back to my dorm after a night of drinking heavily and he reached up and grabbed a twig off of a tree and told me I have to keep it forever. Then six months later, his three-year-old son comes up to me and hands me a twig and tells me the exact same thing. They are two peas smiley face. When I realized every crazy idea I come up with, no matter how ridiculous, he always says, yeah let's do it, he says this regardless of whether he thinks it will actually happen or not but always enthusiastic and supportive. I absolutely love it. It's his support that's lead us to carry out the crazy whims. We always make travel plans and they take us to some amazing places. It's his willingness to follow me where I go and respect the things that I do no matter how outlandish that mean the world to me. When I after half a year of us dating, realized that this had been the most drama-less and yet still very passionate relationship I have been in. I have a history of very stormy relationships and came to the realization, that maybe that is how I love. I have also tried to date guys where my feeling was less strong and found that I pretty soon would lose interest and respect. My current boyfriend, is the most fantastic guy, for many reasons, but he is a keeper because he and I can communicate like mentally healthy people.